Music Fest has been going for 11 years and I've been involved, I think, for eight or nine years now. I can't remember exactly how many years. The most important thing I think with any festival is the community aspect of it and, and there's kind of there's kind of three parts to that. There's the community that we live in immediately, which is for us the Comox Valley, and how well they support the event and support the idea of cultural tourism within our community. I mean we're we're a smaller community in British Columbia and we're being overrun right now by tourism and by uh, people moving here from other communities that are perhaps a little bit more used to seeing things from all over the world than people from this community. I mean, the, the, uh, the scope of what we're doing is fairly new to the Comox Valley. And then there's the larger music community as well, which is, which is worldwide and, and in the last four or five years has become um, fairly sophisticated in terms of how we all communicate with each other and deal with each other and all that kind of stuff. So there's that part of the community. Then there's the community that actually puts on the festival, which is our staff, our board of directors and our volunteers. Um, in particular, our volunteer coordinators who look after all the separate crews from uh, garbage to stage crew to traffic to security to the kitchen crew that feeds all the volunteers. Those coordinators put in days and days of time for the festival and they, they really don't get anything back aside from the experience of being involved in the festival. And that's become a family for a lot of us because so many of us come back every year and it's like a grand reunion every year where you get to see old friends and catch up with them and all that kind of stuff. So to me the whole community thing is really what it's all about. I heard last night when we had our volunteer meeting last night that there are just short of a thousand volunteers wow. that, put this, uh, that put this together. Friday afternoon about two, three o'clock in the afternoon I refer to it as the magic happening, the finishing touch goes on the, the front of the stage, the last piece of fencing is up, the people are up, the smiles are on faces, they're ready to drop and they're still smiling, waiting for that first act and the, the, the real fun to begin. And that's, that's one of the favorite times that I have is watching the, the volunteers in that last two to three hours and make things happen. And I the people here are like are very very dedicated and they do this from the heart. There's no, there's no other way to say it than they do it from the heart. They work hard and they play hard while they're here and we have lots of fun. We're just here to have fun and uh, the work is just part of the fun. <laughs> David Gerson was a huge part of our festival family. Um, he was our MC for a number of years. He was the host of the Vancouver Island Morning CBC show um, for, for a number of years. And way beyond that, he was, he was a, a mentor to me. Um, 
David was one of the first guys I'd pick up the phone and call whenever I had a problem and needed to talk to someone. So when he passed away, really unexpectedly last year, we decided to, to name one of the stages after him as a tribute. And the stage that we used to call the Roland stage, we, we called the, the David Grierson Memorial stage this year. And when the CBC got wind of that, they asked if they could help us launch it. So they, they had the Victoria Afternoons show with Joanne Roberts come and, and broadcast live from that stage as the, the kickoff to the David Grierson stage. I never play Music Fest myself because I think it's a real tacky thing to be an artistic director and program yourself as an artist into the program. But in this case, um, I decided I was going to just just for my friend David. Hey Bob, can you give me a, just a little less acoustic guitar? Todd Butler and I both had a lot to do with with David as friends and uh, David helped both of our careers significantly and, and like I said he was a big part of our of our festival family so we decided we'd do it you know and um, it ended up being a lot of fun and, and uh, hopefully we'll help David's memory carry on from now on with, and, and, and hopefully we'll remember his spirit and keep that as part of our festival as well. <laughs> I'm Joanne Roberts from the Vancouver Island Music Fest. This is the festival edition of All Points West. We're honored today to be officially dedicating this stage that we're standing on as the David Grierson Community Stage. Our colleague David died suddenly in November of a heart attack at the age of 49. He loved this festival and I know he's going to love this show because it has lots of great music in it. Cousin Harley, Gordon Carter, As the Crow Flies, and Todd Butler and Doug Cox. All music, all the time, on All Points West. So let's get started. My favorite sights was uh, David Grierson talking to my friend Miller, and uh, he treated him like royalty. And David did that with everybody. He had time for everybody. He always talked to everybody. But Miller was really, really impressed that he got to talk to David Grierson backstage, an eight-year-old boy talking to his hero. That was big and uh, you couldn't find a better MC at all. He, he always knew the right things to say to control the crowd, and he always knew all the right things to say about festival etiquette, and he knew how to stall really, really well. <laughs> <laughs> the roadies loved him. <laughs> yeah, everybody loved him, and, and the thing that, that uh, amazed a lot of people was that he'd come back here year after year and actually remember everyone's names that he would meet and, and uh, you know get to know them and, and that kind of thing. He wouldn't hide out backstage all the time while he was here, all of that. I think he enjoyed what was going on around the festival too much to hide out backstage. Todd, what about you? What did David mean to you? Uh, well, a lot of, a lot of this. Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll go this way. Todd, we'll start with you and then we'll go to Doug. Well, while I was hiding out backstage. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he was never there, Todd. Huh? <laughs> David, uh, I, every memory I have of David Grierson is of him laughing. We laughed all the time. Uh, our relationship was based on that. Uh, you know, we had a, a, we shared in a reverent sense of humor. And uh, what a great guy. He's, he's sorely missed. Well, it, it was, it was great to, to be able to do the tribute to David with Todd. Um, Todd and I used to go out for dinner with David when we were in town in Victoria together, doing shows together and that kind of stuff. And I know it meant the world for Todd to be uh, part of the tribute as well. Um, David was a was a huge supporter of Todd, the musician and the songwriter, to the point where David I think had a lot to do with Todd's success with the CBC. 
But Todd is a, a multi, multi talented guy. He's a brilliant MC. He's been an MC at the festival for a number of years now as well. Um, I think as long as David Gerson was. And uh, he's also a great guitar player and a, a brilliant comedian. So he's the perfect MC because he's kind of the hometown hero. Everybody knows him and loves him. He's a meat Canadian, now he's an English lord. We still live in Canada, it's all we can afford. Oh, Conrad Black, so much. His contribution to the festival has been fantastic that way because uh, not only does he, does he do a lot of MCing for us, but he also uh, is a voice of the Comox Valley, and uh, he's done a number of things behind the scenes as well for the festival. You know, that's one of the charming things about Doug, is he's, uh, he's humble about this, you know? I mean, he does an amazing thing here, and, uh, and he's really humble about it. He wants the credit to go to, to the performers, you know, that come and to the volunteers that work the festival. I mean, he's the nerve center of it, but it, it's all the other people that make it happen, that uh, that make him look good, you know. And so I think he just wants to deflect some of that glory to them, you know. It's just pretty cool. Part of my job is to look after the artistic end of the festival. I book all the music and program all the music, all that kind of stuff. That's the artistic director part of the job. And then the executive producer part of the job is that I basically oversee everything that happens um, in regards to the festival. That doesn't mean that I run everything or, or anything like that. We have an incredible team of people uh, from our board of directors down to all the volunteers to the other staff members as well. Um, so I sort of oversee everything that everybody's doing. Uh, again with the understanding that there's a lot of people now that certainly know their jobs and they're part of the festival a lot better than I do. Um, and I spend most of my time dealing with the artistic end of it. <laughs> As, as festivals go, and I've been to lots of them, I was an ass-kicking first night. Because I've never been to this festival, I've, I've, I've known Doug for years, but I never knew what his programming skills were like. And he programmed the perfect thing. Like, who would have thought that after the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, you could have brought it higher? And what he, he, he not only brought it higher, but brought it to like two new levels. And uh, So he knows what he's doing. You know, I said that to Doug. I said, Doug, a lot of times that people have me on their festivals, for the first time, I'm not the closure. I usually play before the closure. And he goes, no, man, I saw you back. Ain't no way in the world I could not put you on the last. The energy, though. We want to go out with a bang. And then that's how it all happened. David Wilcox is, is, we're talking about the American singer-songwriter David Wilcox. Um, I met David at a guitar camp up in Alaska that we were both teaching at and, and got to realize what an incredible guy he is and what a really unique singer-songwriter he is. It's sure to take its toll on me My heart and mind will not agree It was a thrill to have him at Music Fest. He doesn't play very many Canadian festivals at all because of the confusion that goes on between him and the, the very famous Canadian artist David Wilcox. So we just decided to hell with it. We're going to bring him anyways and, and uh, try and warn people that it's not who they think it is. And, and uh, he was one of the guys this year for sure that I got a lot of feedback on. People were saying, who is this guy? How come we've never heard him before? Here with your hand in mine. I'm running out of time And my heart said Come on, let's go And my mind said I don't know And the train is at At a festival, you know that everyone who comes is going to find music that absolutely grabs them. And so the fun part is instead of trying to go wider with what you do, go deeper, be more uniquely yourself and know that the people that you do reach, you'll reach at a deeper level. And the people that you miss, don't worry about them because there'll be somebody there to catch them, somebody whose music is just right for them.
It's not just by coincidence That lives are made of accidents And doesn't it make perfect sense That life turns on a point in time And I know that this is mine My heart says Come on, let's go And my mind says I don't know And the train is at the station I'm lost in contemplation And this ticket's only good for just so long I can't think about it till that train is gone I'll just get on People say, where do you want your music to be in ten years? And I say, right here, you know, right I want it to feel surprising, I want it to feel moving and I want it to be my teacher and so the music takes off you know it's like walking a big dog you don't know who's walking who it just takes off and so now here I am playing music way up north and and there's people who say you know it's so confusing there's this other David Wilcox you know and uh, if I had thought that the music would have pulled me up this far I probably would have changed my name when I had a chance but K9 is a real interesting guy who's seen a lot more of the world and a lot more hard parts of the world than most of us would see in a lifetime. He's a very young man, um, being recognized now as one of the main voices in, in, uh, in, in hip-hop music, and he's from Somalia. His family escaped from Somalia on the last commercial flight that left that country. Um, he went from there to New York, I think, and then from New York to Canada. And uh, he's definitely a voice that a lot of younger people are really turned on to today. And what's that? Because that's love. You see, there's many things we don't know about love. It's not so often the hardest thing to attain because it's freedom when you're detained. Leave it to me and I'll explain because it's there to me like my mommy and daddy and sister and wifey and pens and pads and thoughts of random order that border the same struggle of human truth. Who's to say what my words are? Thank you. I don't do politics. I, I tell everyone that. Like, my music, I don't think, contains politics. If I say something about the state of the world, it is because I'm being honest. I'm observing what it is. I don't belong to politics. So this is a, this is a tune that we, you know, we never recorded, but um, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> you, can, you can name it, all right? requires you to able to see it in my live shows um, what happens in my album is that it finds a connection between two continents that haven't musically been properly introduced uh, and it's African and North American hip-hop and I, I found a way to with our percussion sensibility with our melody sensibility from home and warmth find a way to intertwine, intertwine that with the fierceness of hip-hop poetry and connect them in a way that finds home. It doesn't, it's not forced, nothing is out of place, and it's a musician's true fortune when they find something like that, you know. And I, I'm, 
people are people are knowing that it is very fresh and it's real, you know. So. Well, I think tofu is is easily one of the most interesting acts on the folk festival circuit today. They're the only act that I'm aware of that consists of a of a three spoken word artists. Um, one of them is a Métis Canadian. One of them is an American. Both of those guys, uh, Shane and Mike, are, are uh, world slam poetry champions. And then CR is this unbelievable musician who, who's kind of like Tom Waits meets a human beatbox. They've got huge hearts, they're incredibly intelligent. Uh, they're, they're incredibly significant today because of what they talk about. I still live there, at the corner of nothing and nowhere. Still stare at drug dealers, teaching teenagers the proper way to share dirty needles. All of them asking me for a helping hand while they turn their veins into a sewer system. But they think life is shit. They have so many problems, I can't begin to listen. That list for all the nights, their mouths become fists. Fights for all the nights, I bring up the lists. I'd be willing to cut my hands off of the wrists and give them away. But they just hand them back to me and say, This isn't money. money. And if there is nothing money, that we say on stage that we don't believe or try to live by. We are not perfect by any means. But, but we understand that the world, and this, I don't want this to sound cheesy, but the world needs love. And it's kind of like, okay, so maybe we can go up there and kind of remind everyone in this audience that, that, that you, you need this. Because the lies just keep leaking through the ceiling and leaving me feeling useless because no, I don't have enough pots, pans, buckets, or hands for all of it. But every now and then, I guess I try to give a shit. Uh, because they're, they're hip-hop artists, they swear quite a bit. So we actually received more complaints about them performing at the festival this year because of their language than any act we've ever had at the festival. And it's Xbox's spot, the treasure of the fact that we were one thing they're not. Still alive, still standing, still strong. So if the world ever tells you you can't make a difference, Trust me, six billion people can be wrong. At the same time, they sold out of CDs immediately after their main stage performance, and a lot of people cited them as being the, the highlight of the festival. And if them are the they the others want to spout, then I doubt you can take them over us plus you over I. You can't multiply one by one by whatever we're sharing the social group without realizing the thing they're talking about is you. They have that amazing craft and clever and fast that keeps us reaching and following and paying attention. But underneath it, there's a solid heart of really good intention, uh, cutting through the, the crap and just uh, getting to the heart of it, getting to the heart of what matters. We've got so many borders spread across these lands. People need to stop pointing fingers and start lending hands. We throw up divisions of west side and east side, slide guilt back and forth. As if we never learned to win north to one south. As if a mouth was a slave you could shackle. As if a thought was a slave to put in chains. As if you could make them build your dreams and not have them dream of freedom but you pass it on your trains. Train, train. It's a real challenge to uh, present the festival as a family-oriented event but at the same time stay current with what's going on in the world. And I mean, spoken word and hip hop is really, uh, as far as folk music goes, or, or the, the spoken music of the people, is kind of the most alive form of music that there is right now. They say, if you want a piece of the American dream, you gotta stand up, you gotta fight, scream, and holler. But if that means fighting fictitious wars, I guess I'm glad I'm from Canada, where my dreams are a little, a little bit, bit smaller. smaller. I guess I need caller ID to keep track of how many times my conscience is calling me, asking me, how can you still live in America? Well, I guess it takes all types. I'm a yin-yang of stars and stripes. Forget country. I'm a little bit powwow, I'm a little bit bagpipes. And yeah, 
I'm all American, but I'm not all I can be. There's still room for me to grow, and I will continue to do so even if all that's left is Starbucks. And there's nowhere go. left to go. 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 And I know, I know there are those who would seek to use our blood to oil their machines. Politics is a type of magic done with broken mirrors and sorceries. When you can't put a border between a lie and a fact. Historically, sticks and stones are the only reason balls have ever cracked. But if you want to ring down walls, use words! Even a whisper has more impact. There was a bit of a dilemma to say, do we, do we have this act here and let them do what they normally do as artists? And I'm committed as the artistic director to never telling the artists what to do. Um, if I can't respect what they do within their art, then I'm not going to hire them. You know? and, and they came up to me before their performance and said, should we tone it down a bit? And are there certain things you don't want us to do? And I said, no, I mean, I'm hiring you because of your art, and, and I'm not going to... Uh, tell you what you can and can't do on our stage. This is a song about uh, seasonal allergies. It's called Get Down, Airborne Bastard. And it's uh, sort of my uh, plea to Mother Nature to take it easy on us. Chris Demeanor is this crazy guy from Calgary who's, uh, again, a, a brilliant spoken word artist and a, a great songwriter. And uh, part of the appeal of Chris is simply Chris himself and what he has to say and what he does. I think I've outgrown the weakness, the seasonal meekness, the sad result of this genetic involvement in my eyes red and raw and my nose a fucking faucet. Spring has sprung, yes, and I'm a believer in the beauty of new growth and the hell of hay fever. Take the potential of enjoying new nature and drain it away into a pocket full of red balled up toilet paper. In between season, reality rings true, confronted with the fact that Mother Nature hates you. How dare she? That's what I am. Cause while you're pitching your camp stall, I'll be itching my eyeballs Enjoying your lawn, I'll be downstairs with the fan and the humidifier on Get down! Airborne bastard, 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 get down! Nothing's taboo anymore. You know, everything's been heard and everything's been done. That it's the, the idea that there shouldn't, um, you know, that there should be territory that, that can't be explored is a bit ridiculous. What I think is offensive sometimes is when things are done really crassly or they are done just to just to shock or effect, but there's not really any attempt to to uh, to have anything kind of thought provoking in it. Then yeah, that's a bit stupid, but it still shouldn't be stopped or anything. Like I think. I really don't believe in sort of stopping anything. I think even when someone goes totally overboard and says something really vile and disgusting and violent and, and weird, um, I appreciate the reaction that it gets. I think it's, you know, it makes people think about, Jesus, you know, I've thought about stuff like that. Because everyone does. Everyone thinks about truly sick stuff once in a while. One, that once in a while to hear it expressed in music or art is, is, is okay. I wouldn't want it all the time, but yeah, no, nothing's taboo for sure. There are other people that are parents, though, that feel very strongly about about uh, auditing what their kids are exposed to in terms of art and music. So that's a real challenge, and I, I see that being a real challenge in the future for all the festivals now, is how current do you go um, in terms of trying to create a young audience for the festival? And with the current artists that are actually the ones that are significant and are really saying something in their music, uh, how far do you, do you edit? what you present at your festival for that reason. I'm not sure what the answer is yet, but I'm hoping that uh, there's enough people out there that, that respect that, that they won't stop coming to it because we're presenting artists that are a bit on the edge, you know? Despite whatever his musical preferences are and despite what he plays, he's just open to stuff and he's, he's you know, he's really willing to take a good listen to, to things and really think about what his audience want, uh, would like and appreciate you know, as opposed to just what he likes, and that's a really refreshing and nice thing to, 
to see in somebody. You know. Doug is one of the few artistic directors that is a musician. Most of the artistic directors aren't musicians. They're very great music programmers and they're very involved in music, but um, Doug is a picker and so he programs in a different way and I get he's sort of it's, he has a different relationship with these artists than a, a regular artistic partner would have which is why I think there's such a yeah, there's a magical thing to see the way he has shaped this festival to me it's really fun uh, because it has that that wonderful combination of surprising elements that uh, when when you hear them all together they each complement each other and and the whole thing, all different kinds of people, there's this sense of harmony with a capital H. That's the, the the little nugget in the in the whole weekend is finding an act they haven't seen before that they really really enjoy. Uh, so Lil Bach is uh, the he's a Mohan Vina player. He's the son of um, uh, Vishwa Mohan Bach, who is a, a, a an Indian master who invented an instrument called the Mohan Vina, and it's like a it's a lap acoustic slide guitar with 20 sitar drone strings under it, so it's like playing sort of a curry-flavored blues. And so Leo Bott, from a personal level, for me, that was probably the thrill of the whole festival, was to have him come to our festival this year, partly because I play the I play the, the lap slide guitar and he is one of the masters of this style of Indian slide guitar playing. Salil brought me a, an instrument from India this year that I, that I was able to purchase from him and, and set it up for me and gave me some lessons and all that kind of stuff. So to study with, with one of the masters was an, was an absolute honor. Um, I learned a lot from him this year on how to present Indian music. Um, I mean one of the, one of the challenges that I think any festival artistic director would, would tell you is to bring real music from other parts of the world and learn how to present those people in a way that's very respectful to their culture as well. Um, it's sometimes very difficult because you might think they're asking for something that you would think is kind of prima donna-ish when in fact it's really just has nothing to do but with their respect for their music and how it is supposed to be presented. And from the perspective of an artistic director, that's a really great learning experience as well. And I can happily tell you, as an exclusive, that he's coming back this year with his father to play at the festival.
Um, security, I think everybody's going to work really well this year. I don't think it's going to be an issue for anything. Oh, yeah. We've got security in uniform, we've got all our volunteers, Doug's on a golf cart, you know, it's great. We need your help with this. And uh, what, what we're asking you to do to start off with is to please send us an email, care of info at islandmusicfest.com, and let us know your thoughts, let us know your experiences in the campground, any ideas that you have that we can, we can do to fix our festival, because we sure don't want to lose it because of what's going on. So please uh, be patient with us and, and help us out with any ideas you have. If you've had negative experiences, we want to hear about them. And if you've had positive experiences, we want to hear about those too. We'll be making this announcement throughout the day, folks. This is something we need to fix and we need to respond to quickly. And we are taking it very seriously. So please uh, have patience and, and give us your thoughts. Pretty routine every year is young children would rather come in to steal coolers of alcohol than listen to the music. Um, there's going to be some changes for sure. Um, the, the big changes are going to be the challenges that we have now uh, with success in terms of uh, some, some basic things like we have to take our security more seriously. Um, we have to make sure that the people in our campground are, are cared for properly. The volunteers, especially the girls, they can be down here checking for liquor and stuff like that, checking tickets. Don't need uniform guys doing that. Uniform guys are getting paid. They should be out there earning their money where the trouble zones are, and keeping these guys. These are not young kids, these are 20 year old teenagers. It's just uh, we've, we've always relied on our community to make sure that uh, the responsibilities that we have towards our public are looked after. And it's great, and I'm glad that the kids are having fun and can be free here. But you need some restraint. How that, old are you guys? That 16. And you need a chaperone to be here? Yeah. Supposedly, yeah. Isn't that retarded? Music Fest has seen better days. Yeah, it really has. Uh, yeah, have you been here for a few couple yeah. of years? Yeah. And it's been, has it been like this? It no. gets progressively more securitized every yeah. year. Like Secure before, stuff. you could just go whatever once you're in, you're yeah, in. Yeah, but then last year, they security. started like guarding the oh, gates and shit. Well, it's huge now. It's well so far beyond what it used to be. Yeah, it used to be so local. It was a big love-in, you know, and you come here and you everybody you knew one way or the other. Now we come here and, like last night, all those campers just blew our mind. Like, where are they valley people? They can't be. They're from, we don't know where they're from, but it's pretty interesting how, you know, how it's just grown. There's a... Uh, a question out there, is this little music fest getting too big? What do you think about that? Nope. Nope. Okay. We're going to have growing pains just like teenagers. Yeah. Just like any other organization, we're going to have growing pains and we'll get them solved and we'll become bigger. If that's what if that's what has happened, we'll, we'll become bigger and that's we'll take care of it. There are some problems. Definitely. <laughs> well, the issue always is, is uh, people. You want people to come to your event, uh, but at the same time, uh, when you get too many people, uh, so you get friction and one of the issues we're going to be working with is better uh, control with respect to those that are camping here overnight. Uh, it seems that the whole day goes perfect, all the stages go very well, everyone has a great time, but there's a window of time between maybe 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the morning in the camping area where you know things go on a little bit later than they should, a little bit more noise than they should, and so that's something we're going to be working on for next year. Now that we're becoming really successful and being known as the place to be on our weekend, and, and that the Comox Valley is growing so much, we're starting to get more yahoos, quite frankly. Otherwise, uh, we're not going to let it get much bigger. Um, well, we're not going to let it get any bigger, actually. It's, it's big enough as it is.
Ladies and gentlemen, Kev Mo. Keb Moe is kind of the, the one of the young uh, Afro-American blues singers that there are. There's, there's really only a handful of them and he was one of the guys from his generation I think that just kind of stepped out and said yeah the blues is cool again we can we can go back to being blues musicians and be proud of that. beyond the blues. He's not a true traditional blues man. His songs are, are more current than that. And um, I think he's sort of, if you looked at, at Taj Mahal for an example, he's kind of the next generation acoustic blues man. One of the things that's really unique about our event is that we're a campground festival. We're in a smaller center. People come to our festival, they stay there for the entire weekend. It's, it's often the, the term community of choice is used for a whole weekend. You, you sign on and you say, I want to be part of this community for three or four days. I think that's a little different than the city festivals where, where often people show up for one day. They know they're going to go home to their own beds that night. So the sense of uh, ownership is a little bit different. It's a little more intense with a campground festival as well.
it's a, a family uh, event when it happens. We get together for the 10 days that it, or about yeah about 10 days that it takes us to do this festival, and it's a, a, a good time. It's a party from the time we start to the time we end, and we work all day and we party from midnight till four in the morning. It's still a gathering of all the old hippies that used to be here. You know, you look around, you find your friends here. You know they're going to be here somewhere. So yeah. it's, it's a great, great time. They're just lost in the crowd. <laughs> all the uh, people that reunite after a year away, you see somebody that you haven't seen from a, for a year. They're from Edmonton. They're from Vancouver. They're, sometimes you have people come down from the Yukon for the, the time to, to volunteer for just a little bit of... We uh, <laughs> spend a lot of time with people we haven't seen for about a year, and it's like meeting old friends and family, and we, it's really a, a, a camaraderie of people yeah. that put this together. My name is Diana Page and I'm the coordinator of the kids area at Music Fest and we actually, you know, we have quite an area here for kids of all ages just so that when parents come to the festival they have a place where the kids can actually enjoy themselves and everyone winds up enjoying the festival more because the kids don't have to sit still all day long just listening to music. It's an honor to sort of do this for the kids and, and have the parents sort of say that this has made their festival experience really, really good. And, you know, I, I've heard that it's, it's an excellent kids' area. They've never seen anything quite like it. Uh, well, when I first moved to the valley, I just heard how amazing it was, and uh, my partner was like, yeah, we should go to Music Fest, so we got tickets, and we came, loved it, and then the following year, um, someone approached me and said, do you want to uh, volunteer massage backstage? I said, great, I'll do it. So it's a great experience. Oh, you know, and this is why I became a musician. It has nothing to do with, you know, all the glory and the parties and, you know, all the money. There's nothing to do with that. There's plenty of it, let me tell you. But uh, it's this, it's the free back ropes. Oh, bring it on. <laughs> I've, wor I've been to Music Fest before. It's a great event, and when the opportunity came to actually get closer to some of the artists and be able to talk to them and work with them and be part of this great event, it was a rare opportunity, I thought, and I jumped at it, and uh, happy to be here. I know some of the other massage therapists have in the past said, well, you know, we have to dedicate four hours a day each of the days, and that's, uh, I could make a lot of money doing that, but they don't get it. It's not about making the money, it's about being here with these great people, and uh, it's a huge experience. It's really worth it. I mean, our, our basic philosophy behind Music Fest, just aside from all the politics and the business, is that we're inviting people to our home for a party. If you were having someone at your house, how would you treat them? You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna invite someone to your house and, and then expect them to pay for everything or, or, uh, or say, go sit in that corner until it's time for me to talk to you. People just come up all the time and, and, and are, are just being overtly helpful. It's like they understand that musicians are completely useless and disorganized and can't take care of themselves. It's like, do you have your badge? Do you have your hotel key? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Or, oh, no, I don't. Well, I'll help you find it. Like, people are really, really cool that way. Here, uh, we really felt like uh, artists, you know, and the main formula to get an artist to shine is to make it to where 
He doesn't really have to think about anything else at the gig site other than his craft. And uh, you guys are really successful at doing that. This is an absolutely charming festival. Very, um, there's already like an amazing family atmosphere backstage, and that's, that's scary good. Yeah. How much philosophy of our festival is that we're putting on a, a party mostly for our community but we're inviting people to this party so to me the whole community thing is really what it's all about we do have some of these words here Jeff every morning listeners to OTI would know that if you got up early enough you were rewarded with hearing David's morning epiphany. And he wrote one about the Vancouver Island Music Fest. you want to yeah. share it with us? Yeah, the words of David about Vancouver Island Music Fest. I'm not sure exactly what year he wrote, but uh, here goes. You could be forgiven if you mistook a music festival for some kind of nirvana. Thousands gathered in one place who need to eat, sleep, and live for a short period of time. A microcosm, if you will. There are those in charge, most of whom no one remembers electing or really cares. <laughs> Uh, those, those who serve, those who consume. So why does what happened inside the gates feel so different from what goes on outside? Hmm. Both depend on people helping people from all walks of life. Both have to turn a profit so they can come back next year. <laughs> Perhaps what's missing is a common purpose. Thousands know what they want this weekend from Island Music Fest. Will, will they know that same common purpose when they leave those gates? I was standing at a truck stop Just outside a hole Heading eastward toward the prairies They were calling me back home I had seven good years in Vancouver I gave it all that I could give A city rat race may be a lifestyle It just ain't my way to live it's just a feeling, it's like a rainbow Try to touch it and it's gone There are storm clouds on the horizon There is shelter on the farm And when the freeways turn into back roads I had tears in my eyes There ain't nothing like thunder off a prairie sky I made good time through the Kamloops I was heading for the Rogers Pass Stop for coffee in Sorrento Soon the miles were rolling past The light was fading When I hit Canmore I can't believe how it has grown When I saw the lights of Red Deer I knew I was almost home It's just a feeling It's like a rainbow Try to touch it and it's gone There are storm clouds on the horizon But there is shelter on the farm And when the freeways turn into back roads I had tears in my eyes There ain't nothing like thunder Rolling off a prairie sky One of the magical things about Music Fest is that it's run as a world-class festival but on a kind of a smaller level than most of the festivals that run like ours does. Um, we're still a small community festival that's run like a world-class festival and uh, I want to hang on to that as much as possible. And so I wonder as I sit here just how it is it came to be that I find myself back on the west coast Staring out across the sea Though so I'll always be a farm boy Well I guess that I have grown I have found a new belonging The island called
calls me home. It's just a feeling, it's like a rainbow. Try to touch it and it's gone. There are storm clouds on the horizon. Now I know where I belong. Cause when I saw her, Vancouver Island, I had tears in my eyes. There ain't nothing like the ocean rolling up to meet the sky. When I saw her, Vancouver Island, I had tears in my eyes. Yeah.